In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the short row sleeve cap for the short stories crochet cardigan pattern. You can actually use this technique to create a short row sleeve cap on pretty much any uh, cardigan or even sweater pattern. Um, just apply the principle for the stitch pattern that you're working with. I'm going to, as I say, use it for the short stories cardigan, which I'll pop a link to the final pattern page in the comments. I'm using four ply yarn for this pattern or fingering weight. The one I'm using for this sample is Paintbox Socks, which is a classic sock yarn. And I've got a four millimeter hook. If you've got the pattern, you'll know we're working in paired extended single crochet. Um, all the explanations for that are in the pattern. You're also gonna need a couple of stitch markers just to help you um, stay on track. I'm going to use a red one and one of these gold ones just so you can show where you're working. You may need a couple more for the first section, but I'll show you that when we get to it. So this is essentially what we're looking to achieve with this technique. Now, bear in mind, this is unfinished. It hasn't got a collar. It hasn't been blocked and you're looking at the wrong side. So the right side of the sleeve where we pick up the stitches is going to look much flatter. Um, I don't know if you can see on the video, but there's a little bump there, but that will all even out with blocking. The principle you're working with is you start by working short rows either side, here's my shoulder seam, either side of the seam, and you increase the length of the rows to create this sleeve cap. The point in this is to create a much better fit around the shoulder. And rather than creating a sleeve working cuff up I haven't actually finished this sleeve because I ran out of yarn um, but rather than working a sleeve flat cuff up which is common you work a sleeve up that way and then work a sleeve cap we're going to do it all in one and that's why this is such a great technique it's used a lot in knitting I've only seen it a few times in crochet you do need to be able to accurately count your stitches and do pay attention to the length of your rows especially with the short row section if you've not done it before can be a little bit confusing, but once you get the principle, you'll be away. And that's why I'm making this video. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do to start the sleeve cap, you can see here, I've got the underarm hole with the underarm shaping here. I'm gonna pick up a round of just single crochet around the armhole. That will essentially create a setup row that we're gonna be working into. For this pattern, I'm going to pick up 61 stitches all around. Now, if you have trouble trouble picking up stitches, this, this can actually be the trickiest part. I'm gonna join my yarn at the bot bottom of the underarm seam, which is here. You can see I haven't sewn in my ends yet, so I need to be a bit careful. So I've joined my yarn to the top of the underarm seam, which is here. I'm just gonna take you a bit closer, just bear with me. Okay, that's a bit better. So I'm gonna work around this armhole. I want 61 stitches in total, and it can be a bit tricky because I don't have, the multiple of rows I have for the armhole depth is not equal to the number of stitches. So you kind of have to plan it out a bit when you're picking up stitches. And when this pattern was in testing, one of the things that people struggled with was picking up the right amount of stitches. So, with 61, it's relatively easy. There's not a huge misbalance between the, the row numbers and um, the stitches I need to pick up. But what I can do is pop a marker in the top. That's my top shoulder seam. And then I know I have to work 30 slash 30 and a half stitches. So what I could do is work 30 around there, one in the shoulder seam and 30 around the other side. Now, if you're working on a larger size, this is the small, and you've got more stitches to pick up, you don't want to work, say you've got, um, so 83 is one of the stitch counts. Say you've got 83, that's 41 and a half each side. So you don't really want to go 41, get to here, and realise you've worked 40 already. So what you can do is you can split it further. You could put an extra stitch marker halfway up, then you know you've got work 20 from there to there, 20 from there to there, or 21, 22, whatever the, the maths is, but you can divide your total stitch count by four and then work it in quarters. That just helps you get a really even um, uh, distribution of your stitches around the armhole. 
So I'm going to go away and work that and then we'll come back and we'll start to look at the short rows. Okay, so that's my round of extended single crochet. I think I said single crochet earlier, but for this pattern I'm working extended singles. Now I had more rows on each side than I had stitches. So I mentioned I had 61 stitches, so 30 up the front, 30 down the back with one kind of floating stitch that I could distribute wherever. Now I think I had um, 32 rows, but I definitely have more rows. So I've placed a couple of spots. You can see this one there. I've worked an extended single two together. And what that does, it creates the one stitch to work into, but it stops any kind of holes. You can just see the stitch there. You then don't get any like holes where you join it in the round. And it's quite a nice way to distribute your stitches. Um, if you've got more stitches, than rows so say i had to work 40 stitches up there i'd obviously have to double up and this is where with this kind of garment blocking really is useful because it kind of helps even out the tension you could also maybe even go to a smaller hook size or just intentionally tighten up your tension a little bit but you want this to lay nice and flat um so you don't want really want any any puckers or anything and you can see this is quite a stretchy fabric so you get quite a lot of uh, forgiveness in it should we say okay so next we're going to talk about these short rows I'll just try and give you a visual on how these are going to work so I am at the bottom I've made my setup round and that's around the plan is to work so I have come around this way I'm not going to use clockwise and anti-clockwise because I'm left-handed and you may be watching the right-handed version of this video, which flips. So I'm going to work back up in this direction. I'm going to work in, in my stitch pattern, which is my paired extended singles, up to the seam and a little bit past the seam, so probably to about here. Once I've done that, I'm going to work back. So that's my first long short row if you like so i'm going to leave all this bit unworked then i'm going to work back this way i'm going to pop a marker in that stitch because i want to be really careful about where each row starts so when i come to extend it i'll know i'm in the right place so i work that row the long short row then i'm going to work my first sort of proper short row if you like so i'm going to work back to about here this is all worked in pattern. There's some adjustments which are in the pattern to show how you can stop any kind of jog because of the stitch height. So once I've worked there, that's my first proper short row really. It's if you're working from the pattern, that will be row two. So this is row one, that's row two. Then row three, which is gonna be the row I repeat all the way around. I'm gonna work back to this marker and then a couple of stitches beyond the marker that will give me a two stitch increase. Then I'm gonna turn around and work the same a little bit longer, and then a little bit longer, and a little bit longer. And as you see how this one looks, so you can see up top, we've got the short row and the rows get progressively longer, but that creates this nice, um, let's put my arm in there. Um, on my hand even that creates this nice kind of curved look you can kind of see it the way it extends and we're going to do that round towards the end of that underarm hole so when you're working the lot each row is two stitches longer you'll go to the marker and you'll go over the marker so you'll work back either into this setup row if you're on this side or if you're working your short row this way you'll work into that, that row one. But at the moment, or after the first row, because we'll work up here, there'll be an extra set of stitches here compared to here. So once you finish your short rows, and I'm gonna go through this as I work, so don't, don't panic if it's not making a lot of sense right now. But on the last row, you'll come down and you'll work into all these unworked stitches, and then you'll work one further round just to finish it off, and then you'll be able to go and start your sleeve. Okay, so I'm going to get started. I'll work the first row and then I'll show you at the end and just talk you through it as we go. I've zoomed out a little bit so you can see me working, but essentially I've worked row one. So you can see, let's just take that out. 
This is what I mentioned before about how you can see I've worked in these stitches at the back, but not here at the front. And I've worked in my stitch pattern around, here's the shoulder seam to here. Now the last couple of stitches, so this is a right side row, so I'm working on the inside out. This is a paired extended single, but in the last three stitches, I've worked an extended single, a single, and then a slip stitch. It's really important, and I'm gonna go and redo this, that you keep this slip stitch here relatively relaxed, because if you don't, you can get some puckering. So I'm just gonna rework that slip stitch. So I've got my extended single, my single, I'm gonna skip a stitch. I've just pulled that loop up a little bit and I'm just gonna work a slip stitch. So I'm gonna start my next row, let's get that out from underneath so you can see it, in that slip stitch. For this section of the pattern, the slip stitch counts as a stitch. So I'm gonna chain one, turn my work. So this is row two that I'm gonna start. So in that slip stitch, I'm gonna work one single and one extended single in that first stitch. And I'm gonna take my marker, let's use the red one for the front. I'm gonna put my marker in the first stitch of the row, just there. These looking ones are useful. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to work my paired stitches across. So I'm going to work, I'm going to skip that stitch, work two extended, skip a stitch uh, six times. That's me working in my paired extingle. Extingle, extended single. So I'm gonna skip, skip a stitch. In this stitch, I'm gonna work one extended single and one single. And then just like on the last row, I'm gonna work one slip stitch, skip that stitch, one stitch there. And again, I'm gonna keep that slip stitch nice and loose. So that is my first short row. The next row, which is row three, if you're working in the pattern, I'm gonna chain and turn, and this is gonna be the row repeat, excuse my yarn buff there, that we're gonna work throughout the sleeve cap. So just like the last row, we're gonna start with a single crochet, and um, an extended single crochet in that first stitch. So that's that slip stitch from the previous row. So there's my single, and there's my extended single. And then I'm gonna take this goldy stitch marker or bronze and put it in the first stitch of the row. So now I've got two stitch markers and I'm gonna keep alternating these markers the whole way through. So one is at the beginning of the row that you just that you're working into, and one is at the beginning of the row that you're working. So I'm then gonna work in my stitch pattern, which is paired ex extended single crochet across to the marked stitch. So the pattern for the extended, the paired extend, extended single crochet is basically two extended single crochets in the same stitch and then skip one stitch. So if you're in the pattern and you see work in paired extended singles, then the skip stitch is always after the pair. And you'll see shortly why that makes a difference. You also want to make sure when you're working into paired ex extended singles, the row below, you're working into the second. So when I was working on that side, that was the first and that was the second. So it's always going to be the furthest as you work. Um, so that is essentially the first when I was working it, but now it's the second. I hope I just haven't made that much more complicated <laughs> than it needed to be. Okay, so I'm going to keep working here. So that is my last pair. 
So you can see that's my skip one. And then this is my next stitch. I'm going to work into it. So to end this row, to prevent the jog that I was discussing, I'm just going to take my marker out. I'm going to work one single crochet in that stitch. Then I'm going to continue onto, this is the setup round. So these are those unworked stitches. You can see I've worked into that one. It's pulling a bit, bit tight. I'm going to work one extended single crochet into that one and then a slip stitch into that one. And what those order of stitches do is it just smooths off that drop. Um, and I've worked two more stitches down here. So that is essentially what we're gonna repeat the whole way around the cap. So let's just turn this round. So let's, uh, did I chain? Yes, I chained already. So that's the stitch, uh, the stitch mark I'm going to be working towards now. So we'll do that again. So in the first stitch, it's one single and one extended single. Pop this marker back there. I have a habit of not doing these up and then stabbing myself. So that's my first two stitches. I'm going to skip that stitch and work into there. So this was actually the uh, single crochet. We worked into that marked stitch. So I'm going to work two extended singles into there. And then I'm just going to keep working in pattern back across. And you can see I'm still working into the second of that pair. So that's my pair. And the reason that's important is it's so you get a uniform pattern throughout the fabric. If you sort of switch between working the first and second, then your pattern is going to get a bit mixed up. Um, and it's also a really good litmus test as to whether you're in the right stitches, because if you're skipping one and the next stitch is this one instead of this one, you know something's gone a bit wrong somewhere. So again, I'm going to work in pattern up to the marked stitch. So there's my skipped stitch, there's my marked stitch. I'm going to take that out. Work one single crochet there, one extended there and then one slip stitch so on when i'm working in this direction i'm working back into round one so this is the setup round plus that long short row we did at the start and then i'm just going to repeat that all the way around so i'll get my stitch marker ready So start with one single, one extended single in that slip stitch at the end of the previous row. Pop that in there. And then we're just going to work across. That's me working into the single there and then I'm back to working in the pattern. Now I'll just quickly show you how those rows are starting to progress. There are some uh, photos in the pattern of my first sample in the teal. So you can see here, we're starting to get that little kind of angled cap there. And this is gonna keep going like this. So if you compare that to the other side, you can see we've got these little cap bits here that are going to get longer and longer. So there are those stitches I've just started to work into that row. So that's the long and the, the short of it really. I'm going to work a few more of those cap rounds and then I'm just going to get towards the end and show you how the last two rounds work of this cap sleeve. 
So I've worked all my short rows now and got a fresh cup of tea. Hydration is important. And I am ready to finish off the short row section. So here I have 45 stitches around here. I have eight left unworked. This is on my setup round where I picked it up. And then I have eight stitches left unworked. Let's just bring that a bit closer to you. So that's the eight stitches left on my setup round. And then I have eight stitches left here of round one. So you can see that's a bit higher than this side. It's important that you have the same number of stitches each side because essentially what that means is that you have your sleeve cap centered around the seam. So this is what you'll look like. So my next row section, I've got my stitch marker here that I'm gonna use in a minute. I'm gonna go back to the end of my last short row, which ended here. So I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna start this row exactly the same way that I have my other short rows. I've already chained one. So I'm gonna start with one single and one extended single in that slip stitch at the end of the last row. Just like before, I'm gonna pop my marker in that first stitch of the row. It's my single, there we go. Then again, I'm gonna work in paired extended single across to the marked stitch, which is the beginning of the previous row. So let's just work across there. So I'm coming to the end of this previous short row and this is the same as the others. So there is my marked stitch. There's the stitch I'm gonna skip. So I'm gonna remove that marker now. I'm done with that one. It's back in the tin. So I'm gonna, like the previous short rows, just work a single crochet in that stitch, which was the marked stitch. And I'm gonna work an extended double in the next stitch. So the next stitch, this is the setup round where I picked the stitches up from the row ends. So I'm gonna work my extended single there, which then means I've got seven stitches left here. So for this stitch pattern, you need an even number of stitches either side of the markers when you finish your short rows because that'll just make sure that the, the pattern works. So instead of working a slip stitch in here, I'm going to carry on with my paired extended single crochet pattern. So that's two extended single, skip a stitch, two extended single. And I'm gonna do that to the end until I have two stitches left. And then I'm gonna work, I'm back to the end of the row now. You can see here's my first stitch of that round one. So I'm gonna work one extended single in that last stitch. Hope you can see this okay. So that's my one extended single. And then I'm gonna slip stitch to the top of that first stitch of that round, which is, yeah, it's a little bit hidden. I'm gonna pull that nice and tight and then I'm gonna turn. Let's just lay that flat and then you'll see. So essentially that, that first setup round and that first row one, which was the long short row, I've now completed that long short row. So I've now got effectively a round. I've still got my stitch marker in here. So all I'm gonna do next is turn and I'm gonna work back in paired. Let's just move this into the center. Sorry, I get distracted. So I'm gonna work back in, in the pattern, up, round, round to this marker. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for those last eight stitches that I've got there. So you don't really need to see me do all that. So I'll work up here to the marker and then I'll just show you that little bit of that last round. 
I'm just going to show you this bit as I work back over where I removed that marker because it does look a little bit different from where the short row sleeve caps end. So before where I mentioned about how you always put the two, your paired stitches in that second stitch, when you get here, it looks a bit weird because that's your single crochet that you're going to be working into again. So don't worry if the pattern looks a little bit weird on that bit. Once you've done this round, it will all work out nicely. So you can see I've gone up there and now I'm back to working in that second, in that second stitch there. Okay, hopefully you can see I'm working, I'm up to that marked stitch now. There's my marker. So Again, I'm going to remove this stitch now, this stitch marker, that's done with. So I'm going to work one, same as I did on the last row, single crochet there. Then I'm going to work one extended single crochet in this one here. And you can see here, I've got my pair, so I'm going to work an extended single in that one. And then I'm going to go back to working in pattern with my two extended doubles there to the end and then one stitch in the last stitch and then I'm going to slip stitch to the end of that last round or sorry to, this will be to the top of the first round that I've just made so this is all one round and we're back to working on the wrong side here so let's just go back we've got my single crochet that I've worked in the mark stitch extended single in the next stitch on round one and then two extended singles there and then work in pattern to the end of the row so again I had eight stitches left there and then Hang on, it can be a bit tricky to see. You might actually want to put a marker in the first stitch of this round as well when you're switching to rounds. So this is my last stitch, which is where I'd slip stitch at the end of the previous round. And then I'm gonna slip stitch into there, which is my first stitch. So that will be the end of my sleeve cap. Let's just show you how it looks when it's not in a tangled mess. Again, this is still on the wrong side of the cardigan. The body panels have been blocked, but obviously the sleeve hasn't, but a nice blocking should sort all of that out. Let's bring you up a little bit. So you can see how that now looks in comparison to this side here. You can understand a bit more about how it's working out so hopefully you find that a useful guide whether you're working the short stories cardigan pattern or you're just freestyling it and want to understand how this technique works in principle if you found this useful i've got loads of tips for budding designers on my website i'll pop a link below so you can find all the blog posts and tutorials i have there any questions or comments uh, do drop them below thanks for watching